Hello everyone, we are here again and I want to welcome you to the training series on Reservoir Simulation with Eclipse once more. In this lesson, I am going to be talking about the scale section of the simulation model. Now before I begin, I want to quickly share a brief information with you guys. I am very excited recording this lesson. You see, in my previous lesson, I shared a link with you guys which points to my Udemy course that is titled Fundamentals of Reservoir Simulation with Petrel RE. And after sharing this link, I realized that over a hundred persons have followed this link to check out this course. But unfortunately at that time, the course had not been approved. It was passing through the Udemy review process. And I am very happy to announce to you today that the course has passed and it is now available to the public. The course is now live on Udemy and that makes me very excited. All right. So if you are one of those hundred persons who have gone earlier to check the course out, it's now ready for you. So you can go on to search for fundamentals of reservoir simulation with Petrel RE and you're going to find it in the search results. But you can simply make use of the link which I have provided in the description down below. And in addition to that, you can make use of this coupon code YouTube fans to get up to 50% discount on the course. I have also provided a very simple link in the description section that will take you directly to a page where the coupon has already been applied. So all you would need to do is to click on the enroll now button and then you have it. Thank you. Okay, we are now going to continue with the simulation project class underscore two. So if you have been following this training series, you should have this project open right now. All right. Now in the last lesson, which is lesson four, actually, we we're able to add a field model to this simulation. So what this simply means is that we have a reservoir rock which is represented by the grid data we imported from Petrel. Then we have reservoir fluids, that is fluids occupying the pores of the reservoir rock. And this is represented by the PVT data that we added to the simulation as well. Okay, I want you to pause for a second and picture this. I want you to imagine pouring a liquid say water on a solid body or on a solid surface the solid surface could be stone it could be sand clay wood or even glass right so if you have pictured this properly you're going to realize that when water makes contact with any of these solids it's going to have a different behavior in each case all right what i mean by this is that the way water will behave when it makes contact with stone will be different with the way it will behave when it makes contact with sand right now let's go on to look at a slightly different scenario if the fluid that we are pouring on these solid surfaces is changed from water to some other substance for example oil then you're going to realize that an entirely different result is going to be seen from what we have with water. Now in reservoir engineering or reservoir simulation as the case may be, the solid body that we will be considering is the rock formation which makes up the reservoir. And there are different types of rocks which make up the subsurface formation that we call the reservoir. All right. For example, sand or sandstone, as the case may be. And sandstone can even have different classes when you consider rock properties such as permeability, porosity, and so on, right? The reservoir formation may also be made up of shales or clays or any other type of geologic formation. Now, what you're interested in as a reservoir engineer is how fluids interact with the reservoir rock, with the different types of materials which make up the reservoir rock. 
and by fluids in this sense we refer to the fluids which you have defined earlier in the pvt section of your simulation so if your pvt section says you have oil and water then we are going to be talking about how oil and water interact with the reservoir rock okay now understanding the physics of the rock and fluid will enable you to create a proper model a model which represents how the fluids will flow through the pores of the reservoir rock and this is what you get to do in the scale section of the simulation process in eclipse actually scale stands for special core analysis and i believe that making use of the word core analysis will make more sense right core analysis is basically a laboratory study of a tiny sample of the subsurface rock the core analysis study is intended to give a better understanding of the rock properties such as porosity permeability wettability interfacial tension and so on a complete laboratory report on core analysis will also contain relationships between fluid saturation and its relative permeability in the rock now this is the type of data that you are expected to supply in the scale section of your data file it is commonly referred to as saturation functions and it contains relative permeability curves and capillary pressure curves in many reservoir simulation studies this core analysis lab report may not be available for some reasons i mean it's expensive to conduct and without it you can still go ahead with your simulation study anyway it's not always available if you have it it's fine but if you don't have it then you will be left with a second option of making use of correlation in the scale section of eclipse all right and this is what you are going to use to generate the relative permeability and the capillary pressure data to use the correlations you need to first understand the input data set that is required to make a set of saturation function that you need in your simulation now these data sets are simply referred to as endpoints the endpoints include initial water saturation in the reservoir the maximum relative permeability of water the relative permeability of oil and the residual saturation of oil then we also have what we call the core functions which, which are basically used to control how much fluid flows in the rock now what you're going to realize from all of this is that it's a lot of information it, it's so much to talk about in a single youtube video in my course fundamentals of reservoir simulation with petrol re on udemy i teach this topic in more details so I am just going to assume that you want to try it out. You can find the link in the description under this video. Alright, let's move on with the lesson of today. Here is an include file. This file contains an already prepared scale data from correlation. And we are going to import this file into our simulation model. By now, you know how to import include files into your simulation model, right? So all you need to do right now is to open the SCAL section data manager, then go on to import this include file into your simulation project. I am not going to do that now. After importing this file into your simulation project, you should see all of the keywords which have been used in the SCAL section to describe the saturation function for this simulation and also what each of the keywords stand for what they mean you know how to locate that now you will also see that for every keyword we have a table you will see how relative permeability of the fluids vary with saturation first you will notice that as the water saturation which is on the first column increases from the initial water saturation to the maximum water saturation in the data the mobility of water is also increasing then again you will notice that at every point in this data water saturation plus oil saturation is supposed to give you one all right 
That's the basic reason for engineering. So as water saturation increases, technically, oil saturation is supposed to reduce so that both of them can add up to one at every point. And then a reduction in oil saturation is going to result into a reduction in the mobility of oil. Alright, you can also view this information on a chart by displaying the relative permeability curves from here. Alright, this is where I am going to end this lesson. Actually, there is one more thing that needs to be done, but we're going to handle that in the next video. In the next lesson, we're going to import water saturation, which is also called SWAT init by keyword in Eclipse. And it shows the water saturation distribution data in the scale section. This information is normally imported from the static model in Petrel. Okay, now to close, I want to quickly talk about the webinar. A couple of persons have shown interest in taking the webinar. If you are going to be interested in the webinar training, I have shared a document in the description section. This document contains a detailed information about the training. So you're going to find a link to download this document in the description section below. And if you like, you may also send me an email directly on this address. Go on and hit the subscribe button now if you enjoyed this video. See you next time my friends. Bye for now.